All right, this is the Destination Band Camp Junior High Exercise A, the default exercise for timpani. Everyone at camp is required to play this exercise, so we gotta learn it all. Um, things to note, first of all, if we're looking at our key signature, we have three flats, and you'll notice each of those flats do apply to our notes that are in the bass clef. So we have what looks like our lowest note being B flat. Reminder, if we're getting from treble clef to bass clef, we go up two notes. So in treble clef, that would be a G. We go up two notes, G, A, B. And then with our key signature, that makes it B flat. Our higher note is E flat, okay? Treble clef, that would be a C. Go forward two letters, C, D, E. In the key signature, you have a flat on that note, so we have E flat. So we know we have B flat and E flat. Our first step, whenever it comes to this exercise is tuning the timpani. That's the key thing for this. So I'm gonna get a B flat in my head. Um, I've got some bells outside of the picture here, so I'm gonna go strike them. That's probably what you will get in the audition room. So. La. You can sing it, you can whistle it, you can do whatever you need to. We just gotta get that note in our head. So I've got da. I'm going to strike the drum at the lowest pitch and then gliss up with the foot pedal until I get as close as I can. If I need to strike it again, I'll strike again until I get to that pitch. I've got my B flat now. And then. Da, E flat. We'll do the same process here. both pitches I'll strike the lowest drum and the highest drum like really slow half notes just so that I can demonstrate that I have found my pitches on each drum for the judge all right actually this B flat is a hair sharp there we go now that I have both pitches we're looking through the music and I'm just going to go over some of the things that I see. So first of all, we have lots of the one and a rhythms and lots of the one e and rhythms. Measure one, we have one and a two and a. Measure three, we have one e and two e and. So just be on the lookout for those. Another thing with those is, for instance, in measure one, we have lots of cross sticking or er, sticking patterns that involve multiple drums. So we'll talk about that in a moment. The other common or the other rhythm that I see that you may not be super familiar with is in measure two, we have the dotted quarter note. Okay, if we think about the quarter note, the quarter note is equal to two eighth notes. That dot means that we're now going to fill up three eighth notes. If we count three eighth notes, we have one and two, meaning the next note happens on the and of two. So you've got one and, again, one and. I'll click it, one and, again, what and, or we just hold it out, one and. From there, we that next note is actually an eighth note, so we have one and three, four. Again, one and three, four. So, that being said, I'll go ahead and count the first line. I've got my metronome set at 96. I think this is a definitely a reasonable tempo for moderately. Honestly, it could be considered on the fast side, but we have this. One and a two and a three and four. One and three, four. One e and two e and three, four and. One e and two e and three, boom. That gets us through the line. And in fact, you know what? I'm gonna say that that is a little quick. So I'm gonna drop that. Now I'm at 88. One more time, I'll count that first line. One and a two and a three and four. One and three, four. One e and two e and three, Four and one e and two e and three. Boom. That gets us all the way to the second line. Let me see if I can't turn that up a little bit for myself. Oh, wrong way. Oh, that's as loud as it gets. So we have that. The next thing to do is we need to think about our stickings here, okay? And here's the thing. If I'm going from low drum to high drum, I probably want to use my right hand so that I don't have to do any awkward crossovers or anything like that. Okay, if I'm going from high drum to low drum, I probably wanna to try to 
use my left hand to get over there so there's none of this mess going on, all right? So if we're looking at the very first measure, the most logical sticking we can use is right, right, left, right, right, left, right. Specifically so that that right hand is just pivoting and the left hand doesn't have to do any off chord crossovers. So no different than our typical right hand lead, one and a two and a sticking. We're just pivoting that right hand back and forth like this. drum so when we get to measure three we've got one e and two e and three we can do all of that with that right hand lead and that'll actually set us up for the next part i'll play that one more time and then if you notice beat four of measure three we drop down the piano meaning we get really quiet I'd say three inches off the timpani. The timpani doesn't project quite like snare drum, so we do get a little bit of leeway with how loud we play. But right there, I would honestly suggest putting both of those eighth notes in the right hand and then moving it back over for measure four. So you've got this. This is measures three and four. Whenever I'm playing those rolls that you see at the end of four, I'm thinking of a sixlet, okay? All this is is we're fitting three or six notes inside of the beat. So one, two, three, four, five, six, da, 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 I can't even sing it. Anyways, way to think about this is we have our eighth notes. We're fitting three notes inside of each eighth note. So let me grab here. Got my wallet, throw it on there to help mute it whatever that does. And then I can try doing this. That's half of it. Okay, and then we're going to put the rest of it in. That's six notes plus the downbeat of the next beat. Now with that half note roll, we're thinking of doing that twice in a row. of that we'll take this off and apply it over staying nice and relaxed with that roll even stick heights one more time okay and just for now i think that's a good pace for our rolls so that entire line should sound something like this starting off at mezzo forte and Now, if we look at the second line, the first measure is pretty straightforward. One, two, and three, four, and we'll do that same little sixlet thing where we're fitting three notes inside of each eighth note, sounding kind of like this. Okay, and we'll put that in context. If I'm playing that entire measure, it would sound like this. Again, ready, and then we get to measure six, where we have to do this for four entire beats, like so. Notice we crescendo throughout it, getting extra loud to forte. And then also, the next thing to note is our next note is actually on a high drum, so... Anyways, that gets us there. Seven, just straight eighth notes, hand to hand, whole time, and then eight, we're all down on the low drum with the half note roll followed by three and four. One more time. Two, ready, and. 
Okay, now I'm gonna take that off. You notice whenever I did that, I could really focus on stickite and even sounds, which is gonna help that roll really blend. So here's the second line, starting at piano. Rep the iron. some of that more back and forth in the eighth notes and then making sure we get over to the low drum and at piano at beat four measure 10 we're still at piano but we do have some accent at 16th notes so if we're thinking that that piano is at three inches per se then whenever we accent it we're just going to bring it up a little bit we're not going to go to the forte height but it's going to stick out of the texture just a hair like this We've got the back and forth alternating eights and then finally you've got the little sticking one, or four and a one making sure we do that right right left right roll and then end it so something like this last line we're at four tape at first two ready and no need to swipe just put those fingers on the drum to end that all right now we'll play the whole thing this is at 84. one thing i forgot to mention this entire time notice you might be able to hear it i am lightly tapping my foot um tapping your foot's good as you know because it helps us have that um internal time and helps us keep track of exactly where that pulse is okay the more we can tap our foot throughout this without the audience or the judges hearing us, the better probably. Um, also, just a reminder, whenever we're playing timpani, we want the drones to be as close as they can get while still not touching. And then those pedals facing right at us. Obviously this can change drums to drums, but in this case, that's what we're doing. Also, whenever we strike, we wanna think about three inches or so inside from the rim, okay? Always aiming for equal distances from the lugs whenever we strike. Here's the entire etude. And one, two, ready, and. Exercise A, Timpani A2. Good luck.